guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about skincare in summer, specifically in humid conditions. Um, a common question at this time of year. And I thought I'd add this to my summer series. So I have very vivid memories of a time spent doing a launch for a very high-end brand in Singapore. And I can remember very distinctly the absolute havoc this caused with both my skin and my hair and my general sense of well-being. We Irish are not well adapted to such things. Um, I remember going from my hotel to the place where I was meant to do this presentation in front of very glossy press and literally 20 minutes in non-air-conditioned environment meant that my hair, which had been styled with product, was like glue. My skin was, it just looked terrible. Makeup all wet and kind of greasy looking. So major reparations were done on site to try to, to make do, but um, I learned a few things, I can tell you. Um, so I thought I'd go through the way I approach changing up a skincare routine for those kind of really soupy, sticky conditions, um, particularly when you're trying to look pulled together and have some sort of professional veneer. So first things first, do your prep right. Now, I am usually a big advocate of cleansing with very gentle, non-active containing cleansers. But in this instance, if you're particularly prone to oily skin or you have very normal combination um, skin with a really shiny T-zone as I do, I might resort to cleansing with actives. And specifically, I seek out salicylic acid because it's an oil gland friendly active which will exfoliate and help reduce shine and minimize the appearance of pores. So, for instance, the SkinCeuticals Blemish and Age Cleanser contains both BHAs and AHAs to really help ensure that you're getting a nice clean surface that isn't tight but does feel clean and helps minimize the appearance of pores. Now, if you are more normal to dry on the cheeks, as I can certainly be sometimes, particularly after a flight, but still very oily in the T-zone, you might want to do a more localized treatment with a more toner-like product. Um, and something like the Azelac Facial and Body Spray, you can actually use this on your trunk as well if you're prone to breakouts, um, but swabbed onto a cotton pad and just that whisk that over your trouble zones in the T-zone area. I find that very helpful too. So that's kind of your prep done. Um, I think antioxidants are very important in this environment and I would encourage you to use a vitamin C based serum. I would also suggest augmenting that um, from within with an antioxidant based supplement like HelioCare Ultra which contains an ingredient called Polypodium Leucotomus that I think will also help protect your skin, not only against UV, but also against visible light and the effects of pollution. So if you're in a sticky urban environment like Singapore, this is particularly helpful. Um, and the good thing about serum textures, of course, is they don't really add any weight to the skin. They don't tend to feel oily or greasy. The next thing to think about doing is to rationalize the layers you apply after you've done your active steps. So in the morning, if you're thinking about it, often you'll be using potentially moisturizer, sunscreen, and makeup. Now, of those three, the absolute non-negotiable, if you're using retinoids at night, and I think you should, even when in this kind of an environment, you need your sunscreen. So it may be that your skin type allows you to dump both moisturizer and foundation and just use a tinted sunscreen which has got a hydrating base. So I find in certain environments I can get away with just using a layer like the Neostrata Sheer Physical Protection which is SPF 50. Um, I may use a little bit of moisturizer strategically on my cheeks or on my chin if I'm a little bit dry from using my retinoid but I may also be able to get away with just using this on its own. And it's so simple it means I'm skipping three steps and just doing one. Now of course you must apply this properly. Don't be applying it just like you would your tinted uh, your tinted moisturizer where you just use a little bit in your t-zone um, a little bit in your cheeks you must apply this like a proper sunscreen and watch my video on sunscreen application to be sure how to do this um, but for me this works very well it tones down my redness it gives me a nice even base um, and it doesn't look too shiny when i'm finished so for me that's a real time saving step but again, I have to gauge it. Do I need moisturizer here, a little bit here? If so, use something light, like a gel cream format rather than perhaps your more heavier, more luxuriant products. 
So that's your skincare done. Then in terms of makeup, if you are on the go, fine you've got your tinted sunscreen on, but you still might need to touch up later on. So skip powder please. Powder and sticky humid environments just do not work very well. It creates a surface that then you are really stuck with continuing to powder as the day goes on. So better to work with cream textures and a mattifying cream finish. So I might use something like the Lancome um, Tent Idol foundation stick on the go, which gives good coverage, but allows me to use a tiny amount of product to get that coverage. I think that's really important. I don't want to be using lots and lots. I just want a tiny amount very specifically applied. And before I apply that on the go, I will make sure I've blotted completely with my DHC blotting papers. I bought by these because they're so convenient and they're probably the most reasonably priced of all of the um, blotting papers around. They come out nicely, one at a time, not six at a time, like certain more high-end brands. Um, and you know, something strangely satisfying to, to using a, a blotting paper and, and seeing what you're getting off. And then you touch up with your foundation stick. So I find those are the tips that have made a big difference to how my skin travels and how I survive in sticky, humid environments. The hair is another matter. Tell me your top tips for managing a humid environment situation for your skin. I'd love to hear them. Bye for now.